Chapter 11 is called The Fundamental Theorem of Finite Abelian Groups. The statement of the theorem is fairly short, but its implications are kind of broad and its applications not necessarily always easy. This classifies, in some sense, every finite abelian group. Take that in. Every finite abelian group falls under the domain of this theorem. There are plenty of groups that don't, right? Non-abelian groups don't, and non-finite groups don't, infinite groups, and also the combination non infinite non-abelian groups. And I guess, in, yeah, infinite abelian groups even don't fall under this. If you get into the subject deeper, there is a distinction between finite abelian groups and what are called finitely generated abelian groups. They are different, actually. Finite is, what, as it sounds, a finite group. Finitely generated abelian groups can be infinite, like Z. Z is an example of a finitely generated infinite group. It's, it's cyclic. It's got a generator. It's finitely generator. It's got one element that generates it. In fact, two, there's one and negative one are generators of Z. So it's finitely generated, but it's not a finite group. You can classify finitely generated abelian groups as well, but that's not what we're doing. We're sticking with the plain finite. It says every finite abelian group is the direct product, meaning either external or internal direct product, however you want to think about it, of cyclic groups of prime power order. Moreover, the number of terms in the product, meaning the direct product, and the orders of those cyclic groups are uniquely determined by the group. Okay. So let's, let's think about that in the context of examples. By the way, if you wanted to do this subject for your senior seminar, that would be another good one to do beyond what we do here, including doing the proofs of these theorems, which are not easy. Uh, involve a number of lemmas whose proofs are very long. That proof took almost the entire page there. Okay, so we're not going to look at the proofs of these things. We're going to try to think about them in the context of examples. Let's list out abelian groups of various prime power orders. Let's say the prime is three. Abelian groups of order three. How many of them are there? There's just one of them, right? Three is prime. Abelian groups of order three, one of them, Z3, done. Three is prime. Any such group has got to be cyclic of order three. It's got to be isomorphic to Z3. All right, what about abelian groups of order three squared, nine? Well, there's Z9. Anything else you can think of? Nine is three times three. Three is not relatively prime to itself. There's one more. Right? There's that. That's a distinct group. It's not isomorphic to Z9. It's not cyclic because three is not relatively prime to itself. It doesn't have any generators. All none. All non-identity elements of this have order three, right? LCM of A and B, the LCM of A, um, the order of uh, AB is the LCM of the orders of A and the orders of B. The only possibilities for the orders of A and B are one and three in each case. The only LCMs you're gonna get are three when a either a or b is not zero, the identity. Any others? No, there are no others. Does that mean there's no other groups of order nine? Not necessarily. Though nine is three squared, we do have a, okay. Yeah, there aren't any other groups of order nine because Nine is three squared. We have a classification theorem of our group's order P squared. There's only two possibilities. 
We don't have a classification uh, theorem about groups of order three cubed, 27 in general, but the finite, uh, the fundamental theorem of finite abelian groups classifies abelian groups of order 27. Could be Z cyclic, Z27. <clears throat> I guess another possibility must be this. There is one more possibility. What's the one more possibility? There's a start. What do you think? Nine. What about, okay, so that's the external direct product of Z3 with Z9. What about the external direct product of Z9 with Z3? Well, it's isomorphic to this one, so you don't have to list it, right? We proved that, in fact, a week ago, or is it last Monday? More than a week ago, two weeks ago. We proved the order of the groups in an external direct product doesn't matter. Yeah, this is this is all fitting the fundamental theorem of finite abelian groups. We've written groups of the abelian groups of these orders as direct products of cyclic groups of prime power order. Three cubed. Each of these is three to the first, three to the first, and three squared. How about abelian groups of order three to the fourth, 81? Now it starts to get a little trickier. When these prime powers here get higher, listing out all the possibilities, once you get to four especially, it does start to get a little trickier. You can still do it, but you got to be a little bit more careful. So there's Z81. There's the cyclic possibility. There is the one that's going to have all Z3s in it, four of them. What else? There's, I guess, Z9 with itself. There is, hmm, I guess this one. Any others? Z3 with Z27, an example where it's getting trickier. So yes, with four, it does get trickier. These are the possibilities, there's five of them. So when it's three to the first, there's one possibility. When it's three squared, there's two possibilities. When it's three cubed, it's three possibilities. It might lead you to conjecture that the number of possibilities is the same as the power, but no, with a fourth power, it's five possibilities. Let's do it with the fifth power and see if we can figure out what's going on here. Abelian groups of order three to the fifth, 243. There's Z243. There's five Z3s. There's what else? There's uh be systematic about this. There's, say, three Z3s and a Z9. There's a Z3 and two Z9s. You could also do two Z3s and a Z27. You could also do Z9 with Z27. Z3 with Z81. Am I missing any here? How many how do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I believe these are all of them. 
but it's tricky. You can feel like you're uncertain whether you really got them all or not. I believe that's right. The number of such groups doesn't correspond to the power itself, but it is related to the power. And it corresponds to the number of ways to add positive integers to get the power. There's only one way to add positive integers to get one, and that's to add, well, to not really do any adding, one equals one. There are two ways to add positive integers to get two. Two by itself, two equals two, or one plus one. When I say add, I mean, I, I include the case where it's just the number itself. With the power of three, there are three ways to add positive integers to get three. Three is itself, three is one plus one plus one, and three is one plus two. Now, of course, three is also two plus one, but because external direct products commute, we don't consider that as a separate case. Also addition is a commutative as well. There are five ways to get the number four. Four is itself, or four is one plus one plus one plus one, or four is, oh, I'll use the same pattern that I see down here. Think about the powers of three, two plus two with this one. Uh, with this one, think about the powers of three, one, one, and two, one plus one plus two. And with this one, the powers of three are one and three. There are five ways to add positive integers to get four. And there are seven ways to add positive integers to get five. There's five itself. Thinking about the powers of the threes, there's one plus one plus one plus one plus one. Thinking about this example, there's one plus one plus one plus two. Thinking about the fact that nine is three squared there. With this one, there's one plus two plus two. With this one, there's one plus one plus three. With this one, it's two plus three. And with this one, it's one plus four. When you decompose a number as a sum of positive integers, it's called a partition of that positive integer. And what we're computing here are the numbers of partitions of various powers here. Mathematica has got a built-in function to compute these integer partitions. And the command is integer partitions, I believe, or integer, yes, integer partitions of five, for example, there's seven of them, it's writing them as a list. Five is itself, four plus one, three plus two, three plus one plus one, Two plus two plus one, three, two plus one plus one plus one, and one plus one plus one plus one plus one. That's a list of lists. And what is its length? Would be the number of integer partitions of five, and that's going to be seven. This is a famous number theory thing, actually, integer partitions. Um, and this gets big pretty rapidly. The number of integer partitions of 100, for example, is. Uh, maybe too hard for mathematically to compute. Let's try a smaller number. How about the number of integer partitions of 50? 204,226. So what this means is there are 204,226 a billion groups of order 3 to the 50th. Three to the fiftieth is that number? Let's see: millions, billions, trillions, quadrillions, quintillions, hextillions. Seven hundred and seventeen hextillion, eight hundred ninety-seven quintillions, nine hundred eighty-seven quadrillion, six hundred ninety-one trillion, eight hundred fifty-two billion, five hundred eighty-eight million, seven hundred seventy thousand two hundred forty-nine groups of that order. Find a billion groups of that order. There are this many of them. 
There are 204,226 2, a billion groups of this order. We have just used Mathematica and the fundamental theorem of finite abelian groups to verify that. And assuming this pattern really is right, but it is. Is the anything special about the prime three? No. The same kinds of patterns would hold with any other prime. There'd be one abelian group of order two to the first, two, two of order two squared, four, three of order two cubed, eight, five of order two to the fourth, 16, seven of order two to the fifth, 32. Same kind of way, there'd be one abelian group of order five, two abelian groups of order 25, three abelian groups of order 125, five abelian groups of order five to the fourth, 625, seven abelian groups of order five to the fifth, whatever that is, 3,000 something, 3,125, okay. But what if you mix the primes? How many abelian groups are there over order, say two to the fifth times three to the fifth? 32 times 243. 7,776, how many such abelian groups are there? Take the number of abelian groups of order two to the fifth times the number of abelian groups of order three to the fifth. Number of abelian groups of order 7,776 is five, uh, seven times seven, 49 because there's seven abelian groups of order 32. There's seven distinct abelian groups of order three to the fifth, 243. Taking every possible combination of those, you get an abelian group of order 7,776. For example, the most ex extreme example in terms of having the smallest number of uh, orders, elements of smallest orders would be this one. like that. Actually, so that, that's a distinct group of order 7,776. It's not the only way to write it because two and three are relatively prime. So you could combine this. You could say this is isomorphic to the external direct product of Z6 with itself five times. And that would be more convenient if you were trying to figure out the number of elements of various orders. But six is not a prime power. So in terms of the statement of the fundamental theorem of finite abelian groups, the statement is thinking about this form of it. That's one example out of 49 possible examples of abelian groups of order 7,776.